Now lots of people are looking at graphics at the moment and here we have the total confirmed COVID-19 deaths and how rapidly they are increasing. And this is the logarithmic scale type of graph so you always have to watch that. So that's 10, that's 100, that's 1000, that's 10,000, that will be 100,000. And we can see that the deaths in the United States are way higher than the deaths in Belgium from this graph way more deaths in the United States. But the interesting thing is, if we account for the population size, because the United States has got ooh, over, over 330 million people, I think, and Belgium only has about 11 and a half million. So when we actually look at it on this graph, we actually see that the death rate per capita in Belgium is higher. So for every thousand people in Belgium, more are dying than for every thousand people in the United States. So always good to look at the scales and always look good to look at the, uh, the graphing context of the, of the population. And this is another one, deaths per million. So again, we see that Belgium is the highest. Most deaths per million people in Belgium. Then the United Kingdom, Germany down there, who've done particularly well so far, but and then the United States there. So it's always good to look at these things in context because sometimes we forget to do so. And I think it just shows that graphics can be remarkably useful, but they can also be remarkably misleading if we don't read them properly. So um I mean, I'm sure all you all know that already, but it's just interesting to bear it in mind that sometimes news is presented in a way that people want it presented, whereas what we have to do is aim for objectivity, aim for realism, so we can make decisions based on the, the, uh, the, the truth rather than the impression of truth. Now, welcome. It is Wednesday, the 6th of May. Time is going so quickly. Now, I want to start off with some things from the UK this morning because the Office for National Statistics has published its usual data, which always supplies uh, very interesting things for us to look at. Now, first of all, the cases in the UK, um, of course, are increasing. Um, this was the deaths up until uh, yesterday, up until Tuesday, now 29,500. We know it's slightly more than that because of the delay in reporting. And this makes the UK the highest death rate in Europe at the moment, as you probably saw. the. You might have seen the discussion with the, uh, the TV interview yesterday about that. Um, now, we could look at this in context. It's not a competition. Basically, UK, Spain, Italy are now much on a, on a par, unfortunately, albeit a very low par of death. Now, why have things gone so badly in the UK? <clears throat> well, one thing was there was quite a lot of early spread, I think, before this was picked up. There was community transmission at an early stage. And also, London's got a lot of global connections. That's probably why there was this epicentre that started in London, because there's flights coming in from all over the world. And of course, including China in the early days, and then including Italy in the slightly later days. The UK data does include suspected cases. So as we'll see, this the latest data from the Office for National Statistics is up to the uh, the 24th of April. Yeah, 24th of April. Um, and that includes suspected cases. And the way this works is if COVID-19 or coronavirus is mentioned on the death certificate, that's counted as a case. So it's where the certifying doctors think that coronavirus was part of the cause. The testing difficulties we've had in the UK have been well known. It wasn't entirely our fault. I mean, well, it was. Um, I mean, but for example, the UK government ordered three and a half million tests from China to anti anti antibody tests very early on. It turned out the test didn't work, had to be sent back. Testing is increasing now, but it's still not where we want it to be. And then I think the other main reason we've got more cases and deaths in the UK was this herd immunity strategy that was originally being looked at based on the contain, delay, investigate and mitigate sort of a protocol. 
So the idea was that you would contain known cases first of all with contact tracing and isolation. But when that didn't work and there was community spread, you would just go on to delay with community measures. That was where the mistake came in there. We should have carried on all the testing, tracing, isolating strategy as this was carried on as well. We kind of dropped the ball on that one. And then the uh, the investigate was all the science things and the mitigate was the, the health care that would make less people die. So really, I think the mistake in the UK was that we started off looking for individual cases, tracing individual cases, testing individual cases. Then when there was community spread, we thought, well, the virus is there anyway. We know it's there. Why bother testing? And that was the mistake. You have to test and chase, trace every single case, not go for these crude community strategies. That was the big mistake, in my view. Anyway, moving on to um, <clears throat> Office for National Statistics data. Uh, up to the week ending the 24th. Now, I know, I know it's May the 6th now. There's always a delay on this. But the data collected is, is quite accurate, so it's worth looking at. Now, this week up to the 24th of April is what they call week 17. And there was 21,997 deaths in that week in the UK. And that was down by 354 deaths compared to the week before. So that's total number of deaths. And this is 11,500 more than the five-year average. So we can see we have a significant excess of deaths at the moment compared to what we would normally expect at this time of year. And 8,758 mentioned novel coronavirus. Now this is interesting. So this number of deaths mentioned novel coronavirus on the death certificate. And yet this is the total number of excess deaths. So there's more excess deaths on paper than is accounted for by the deaths caused by COVID-19 and coronavirus. Which surely means to me, unless there's some other epidemic going on at the same time, it means that quite a few of these deaths are caused by COVID-19, but it's not recognised on the death certificate. Or COVID-19 is the thing that actually facilitates as the final cause of death. So it looks like this is an underestimate because the excess of deaths is greater. And we've known this for a long time now from something as simple as talking to undertakers. We've known there's been more deaths. So it's 37.4 of all deaths are now attributable to COVID-19. Now, this is concerning in the UK, 7,911 deaths in care homes. So the deaths in care homes have gone up. So the total number of deaths in week 17, the week beginning of the, the week ending the 24th of April, are down on the week before. But the deaths in care homes are up. So there's been more deaths in care homes than in the previous week. 8,243 deaths in hospital, and that was lower. So what we're seeing is the overall deaths are lower. The deaths in hospital from COVID-19 are lower but the deaths from COVID-19 in care homes are higher. So it's care homes that are now a major cause of concern. And in London, it was 50% uh, of deaths registered in week 17. That's the week ending the 24th of April involved COVID-19. Now, just as let, let's look at a few quick graphics that uh, help us with this. Now, this is the data on COVID deaths up to the 24th of April. And we can see that men are in blue and uh, women are in a yellowy colour. Now, we're grateful to see no recorded deaths in the younger age group. But even in the 15 to 44 age group, there are some recorded deaths here involving COVID-19. More in men compared to women. Again, in the 45 to 64 year old age group, more deaths in men than women. 65 to 70, more men than women. 75 to 84, more men than women. 
And we also see that the trend is for increasing age to be associated with increasing death. Now, there's not a big gender difference here, but these numbers, there's less people of this age left to die. So that's why the numbers there are probably less than the numbers there, because the demographic here is less. But we clearly see this maintained trend that's observed all over the world, that more men than women are dying. Now, this is the number of deaths registered by week, England and Wales. 28th of December up to the 24th of April. So we can see that this is all deaths here. Then all deaths started to increase. And we can see that this is the number of COVID deaths in the red line here, which started to increase. So we can see that this increase in total deaths that we're getting over what we normally expect this time of year is due to COVID-19 primarily. The other main causes of death, the influenza and pneumonia, as we see, just follow the normal sort of average for the time of year. Slightly below average of anything. Now, this is deaths by age group in England and Wales. And what this does is this compares deaths from COVID-19 with all deaths. So this blue line here is all deaths in a particular age group. So if we take, for example, the 75 to 84 year old age group, that's all deaths there. And that's the number of those deaths attributable to COVID-19 in those different age groups. It's not telling us about men or women or anything like that. It's just telling us about the total numbers. So that's the proportion. That's the number of deaths from COVID-19. That's the total number of deaths. And it's always useful to look at this in context of the population demographic profile. So these are the ages of the population as a whole. So we see that most people here are in the 15 to 44 year old age group. And of course, they're greatly underrepresented, which is reassuring. And in the older age group here, where there's a higher proportion of deaths, there's actually a much lower number in the population for those deaths to come from, meaning the proportion of deaths is much higher as we get older, as well as the total number of deaths being higher as we go on to older age groups. So here we see this is all deaths in this year, the number of deaths in the year to date up to the 24th of April, and we see it's higher than the five year average. So we know that there is this excess of deaths this year. Now, the deaths from influenza and pneumonia are actually higher than the deaths from COVID-19, but we expect these. These come every year. These are common causes of death in the UK. So this is the COVID-19 deaths that account for this, or we believe account for this excess in deaths. And this was the number of COVID-19 deaths in that one week, in week 17. So we see that there's more deaths, basically, than the five-year average, and this is attributable to COVID-19. Now, this is a remarkably sad graphic, this one, um, because this is showing where people die. So this is the total number of deaths, and this is COVID deaths. So this is the number of people dying at home, and this is the number of people dying at home from covid and this is the number of people dying in acute hospitals. So it just seems so sad that so many people are dying in hospital. And of course, we know that people that are dying of COVID-19 in hospital here very often don't have their relatives with them, which is remarkably sad, which is the same as the situation in care homes. So the proportion of deaths attributable to COVID in hospital as opposed to the total number of deaths there. Then this final graphic I'm going to show you, this is um, the, no the number of deaths um, in hospital here is in blue. So again, sadly, we see that most people are dying in hospital and the number of deaths in care homes here is in red. So what we see is the proportion of deaths in care homes are increasing while the proportion of deaths in hospital are decreasing. But we also see that due to the lockdown measures, the numbers of deaths overall are decreasing. So I'm aware that was quite a um, 
quite a heavy session so i think i'll probably you know, just show you a few pictures now and then we'll come back and do the us and canada and the rest of the world uh, shortly so this is amy and baby gillen who seems very interested so that's that's good obviously a highly intelligent baby barbara from uh, augusta georgia i think thank you for watching barbara Bruce and Cheryl in New Zealand. New Zealand, definitely a success story. No, I can't pronounce your name. I am very sorry. Draginda in anyway, you're in Serbia. Good to know you're watching in Serbia. Just amazing people watching all over the world. This is Ed in Phoenix, who seems to be Seems to have a good taste in pens. <laughs> uh, this is Fred in New Zealand. He seems to be taking vitamin D. Thank you, Fred. Howard and Janice in Ohio. Seem to have quite a few people watching Ohio. So you're, you're remarkably welcome from Ohio. Thank you, Howard and Janice. This is uh, Hunting from uh, Kentucky. A few viewers from the US today. James from Florida, Sunshine State. Twice there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, James from Florida. Jane and Dale from uh, Durban, South Africa. Okay, great. Thank you for watching in South Africa. <laughs> oh, you make masks, don't you? They do some sort of uh, embroidery things. It's obviously good homemade masks. Well done. Keep your physical distance. This is from Canada, obviously. Now, going to show myself up here is this a moose um not quite sure <laughs> i think you have moose in canada don't you apologies to all canadians if i'm wrong this is keith in uh, sheffield in the uk glad to see he's demonstrating correct <coughs> mask wearing protocol <coughs> Uh, Lee and Donna in, in, in England. Thanks for that, Lee and Donna. Lee in Florida, back across the pond. Lots of uh, people watching in the United States, which is wonderful. More on the United States in the next video, by the way. This is Lisa in Dublin in Ireland. What a cat, grief. So thank you, Lisa. I'm sure that's another homemade mask. Excellent. All these clever people around can make masks. Oh, this is um, Mariana from New Zealand. I probably pronounced that wrong. But she's a ceramic uh, sculptor and she's made all these ceramic coronaviruses. <laughs> that, was <clears throat> that was interesting. Michael in Queensland in Australia, just by the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, this is Miguel from Puerto Rico. So great to know you're watching in uh, Puerto Rico. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Now I'm going to do the United States and a few other countries in a minute. So do come back if you want to do that. I'm sorry this was a bit heavy today. I, I realised that was uh, today was really quite uh, quite statistical. So <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you managed to get through that. Some interesting stuff there, but um, easier things to follow in the next video, I'm sure. <laughs>